Hello everyone, welcome back to the online tutorial on quantum chemistry. Today we are going to learn about the Bohr atom model. Before going to the details of the atom model by Niels Bohr, let's have a short look at two important points. First one is that even before Niels Bohr introduced his atom model, Rutherford had proposed a model of atom, Rutherford model of atom. In Rutherford model, he considered that atom has a very heavy but tiny and positively charged nucleus at its center. And this is a nucleus and the electrons in the atom are revolving around the nucleus in circular orbits. We can consider this as a circular orbit and we will consider one electron revolving around the nucleus in this orbit. We can see that the velocity of the electron changes from time to time as it revolves around the nucleus. For example, this is the direction of velocity at this point. Velocity is the vector and it has both magnitude and direction. So the direction of the velocity will be through the tangent of the circle. When the electron reaches this point, the direction of the velocity will be like this. And when the electron reach here, this will be the direction of the velocity. It means that during the circular motion, the velocity changes. The velocity changes means that there is an acceleration. But according to classical mechanics, any charged particle when accelerates emits electromagnetic radiation. Here, electron is a charged particle, negatively charged particle, and it accelerates around the nucleus. So from classical mechanics, we can expect that this electron will continuously emit electromagnetic radiation. The electron, suppose it emits electromagnetic radiation at this point, so the electron will come close to the nucleus by continuously emitting electromagnetic radiation. So the emission of electromagnetic radiation will continue while the electron revolve around the nucleus and then it comes closer and close to the nucleus so that it will follow a spiral path like this and finally fall on the nucleus so that the atom will collapse. So the Rutherford model was not able to explain a stable model of atom and it was the first task before Niels Bohr to introduce an atom model which is stable. The second point to be remembered is the emission spectrum of hydrogen that we already learned in the previous video. We went through the Rydberg formula nu bar which is equal to nu bar is equal to Rh times 1 divided by n1 square minus 1 divided by n2 square where n1 and n2 are indicates and n2 is greater than n1. The value of Rh is equal to 109680 centimeter inverse and it is called Rydberg constant. The modern value of Rydberg constant is 109677.57 centimeter inverse and this was an empirical formula without any theoretical support this formula explained the position of the lines in the emission spectrum of hydrogen and this was the second task before Niels Bohr to give a theoretical explanation to the Rydberg formula and thereby explain the emission spectrum of hydrogen. 
This Ritter formula was introduced in late 1880s and Rutherford atom model was introduced in 1911 and it was two years later Niels Bohr came with his atom model that was in 1930. Now let's look at the details of the Bohr atom model. According to Bohr atom model, electrons are revolving around the nucleus in circular orbits. The electron is the nucleus is at the center and the electrons are revolving around the nucleus in circular orbits. And Bohr called these orbits as stationary orbits. Stationary orbits. And then Bohr defined the stationary orbits. The stationary orbits are those in which the angular momentum of the electron is an integral multiple of h divided by 2 pi. Angular momentum L which is equal to mass times velocity times radius of the orbit is equal to N h divided by 2 pi. Integral multiple of h divided by 2 pi where n is equal to 1, 2, 3, etc. So these are the stationary orbits where the angular momentum is quantized as nh by 2 pi. And as long as the electrons revolve around the nucleus in stationary orbits, they will not emit electromagnetic radiation. That is why they are called stationary orbits. So in stationary orbits, there is no emission of electromagnetic radiation as long as the electron stays in the stationary orbit. And the fourth one, an electron can jump from one stationary orbit to the other stationary orbit by absorbing or emitting electromagnetic radiation. For example, when an electron falls from a stationary orbit of higher energy to a stationary orbit of lower energy, electromagnetic radiation will be emitted. And the frequency of this electromagnetic radiation depends on the difference in energy between the stationary orbits. If E2 is the higher orbit and E1 is the lower orbit, E2 minus E1, this is the energy difference, which is delta E, and this delta E will be equal to H nu, where nu is the frequency of the electromagnetic radiation emitted. This is essentially the Bohr model of atom. Now let's have a look at the mathematical steps in the Bohr model of atom. We will use the Bohr model to find out the radius of orbits in hydrogen atom. According to Bohr model, the electrons are revolving around the nucleus in circular orbits called the stationary orbits. And it is like there is a ball which is tied at the end of a string. We are rotating this ball using our hand. And during the rotation of the ball, it experiences acceleration. We saw this already. Suppose in the electron, in the place of electron, we consider the ball. When the ball is here, the direction of velocity will be like this. When the ball reach here, the direction of velocity will be like this. When the ball reach here, the direction of velocity will be like this. Here is our hand in the center. Due to the change in velocity, there is an acceleration and the acceleration will be directed to the center. It means that there is a force 
acting towards the center, there is a center seeking force called the centripetal force. And the winding of the centripetal force is equal to mv square divided by r, where m is the mass of the ball in this case, v is the velocity of the ball, and r is the radius in which the ball is rotating. And this center seeking force or centripetal force will be provided by the tension of the string. Now in our case, we have the electron revolving around the nucleus in the circular orbit. In the, in the place of board there is an electron. And due to the circular motion, the electron will also experience a centripetal force. And this centripetal force will be equal to the Coulombic force of attraction between the nucleus and the electron. In the case of the board, the centripetal force was provided by the tension of the string. In this case, it is provided by the Coulombic force of attraction between the electron and nucleus because nucleus has the positive charge and electron has the negative charge. There will be an attractive force. And this Coulombic force of attraction will be equal to E square divided by 4 pi epsilon 0 R square in the case of the hydrogen atom. Because in the case of hydrogen atom, there is a proton in the nucleus and there is an electron in the orbit. So they have the same charge with a different sign. So it is E square divided by 4 pi epsilon 0 R square. Here, the centripetal force will be equal to the Coulombic force of attraction. So E square divided by 4 pi epsilon 0 r square is equal to mv square divided by r. And from both the sec second postulate, mvr angular momentum is equal to nh divided by 2 pi. So v is equal to nh divided by 2 pi mr. And we can substitute the value of v in this equation. Let me call this as equation number 1. We will substitute the value of v here. So we have e square divided by 4 pi epsilon 0 r square is equal to m times v square. v square is n square h square divided by 4 pi square m square r square times r. So we can cancel 4 and 4 pi and pi r square and r square m and m. So we have r is equal to epsilon 0 n square h square divided by pi m e square. See, epsilon 0 is the permittivity of free space, which is a constant. h is the Planck's constant. pi, it is a constant. m is the mass of the electron, is a constant. e is the charge of the electron, that is also a constant. So we have n square here. The value of n is equal to 1, 2, 3, etc. So the radius is n square times a constant. So it will be like, the radius will be like 1 square times a constant or 2 square times a constant, 3 square times a constant, etc. Means the radius itself is quantized. The electron cannot revolve in all orbits with the old radius. The electron can rotate only in certain orbits where the radius is defined by this equation epsilon 0 n square h square divided by pi m e square. 
Now let's calculate the energy of an electron in an orbit of the hydrogen atom. Energy. Electron has the kinetic energy due to its motion and potential energy due to the attraction with the nucleus. The potential energy of the electron is equal to minus e square divided by 4 pi epsilon 0 r. This is the potential energy of two charges plus e and minus e separated by a distance r minus e square by 4 pi epsilon 0 r. And the kinetic energy is equal to half mv square where n is the mass of the electron and v is its velocity. So the total energy of the electron will be equal to the kinetic energy plus potential energy. So half mv square minus e square divided by 4 pi epsilon 0 r. But mv square we can calculate from equation number 1 mv square is equal to e square r divided by 4 pi epsilon 0 r square 4 pi epsilon 0 r square r r cancel so mv square is equal to e square by 4 pi epsilon 0 r now let us substitute the value of mv square in this equation. Let me call this equation as equation number 2. So total energy is equal to half mv square is equal to e square divided by 4 pi epsilon 0 r minus e square divided by 4 pi epsilon 0 r. That is equal to minus e square divided by 8 pi epsilon 0 r. Now we can substitute the value of r. r is equal to epsilon 0 x square h square divided by pi m e square. So total energy is equal to minus e square divided by 8 pi epsilon 0 times 1 by r. And by r is equal to pi m e square divided by epsilon 0 n square h square pi pi are cancelled. So total energy is equal to minus m e raised to 4 divided by 8 epsilon 0 square n square h square. See, m is the mass of the electron, it's a constant, e is the charge of the electron, which is constant, epsilon 0 is constant, h is a constant. So we have n which is equal to 1, 2, 3, etc. So total energy is minus 1 by n square times a constant it means that the total energy is quantized the value of one minus one by n square increases as the value of n increases because n is in the denominator so the radius of the the energy of the electrons in the Bohr orbits will increase from first orbit to second orbit to third orbit to fourth orbit like that. The first orbit will have the least energy, the second orbit will have a higher energy, third orbit will have even higher energy like that. As the radius of the orbit increases, the energy of the electron revolving in that orbit will also increase. See, the energy of the electron is minus m e raised to 4 divided by 8 epsilon 0 square n square h square and it has a negative sign. It means that the electrons are in the bound stage. What does it mean? The energy of the electron 
in any ball orbit will be less than the energy of the nucleus and electron when they are separated at infinity. What does that mean? When the electron comes to the attractive field of the nucleus, its energy reduces. If you have difficulty to understand this one, you can consider that this is the nucleus and here is the first ball orbit. The second ball orbit is here, third one is here and so on. We can consider an electron in the first Bohr orbit for n is equal to 1. This electron is close to the nucleus, so it is in the attractive force of the nucleus. In order to take this electron from this orbit to this orbit, we need to supply energy. Then only this electron can be pulled from the vicinity of the nucleus to here. We have to supply energy because nucleus is pulling the electron towards it. So when the electron goes away from the nucleus, its energy increases. We have to supply energy to the nucleus, then only it can be taken away from the vicinity of the nucleus. So we can think the reverse. When the electron comes from outside or from the infinity to the attractive field of the nucleus, its energy actually reduces. That's why the first orbit will have the lowest energy, the second orbit will have even higher energy and third orbit will have even more energy and so on. So, Bohr model was able to explain the radius of the orbit and the energy of the electrons revolving in that orbit. Now let's see how Bohr explained the emission spectrum of hydrogen. From the Bohr model we have already calculated the radius Rn that is the radius of the nth orbit which is equal to x0 0 n square h square divided by pi m b square and the energy of the nth orbit as minus m e raised to 4 divided by 8 epsilon 0 square n square h square. And uh, here is a pictorial representation of this. You can see the nucleus here, the first Bohr radius, the second Bohr orbit, the third Bohr orbit, fourth one, fifth one, etc. Bohr explained that the Lyman series results from the transition of electrons from the higher orbits to the first orbit means the transition of electrons from second, third, fourth, fifth, etc. to the first orbit results in the Lyman series. Like that, the transition from the higher orbits to second orbit results in the Balmer series. Similarly, the transition from the higher orbits to the third orbit results in the passion series and the transition of electrons from the higher orbits to the fourth orbit results in the bracket series and such a transitions to the fifth orbit from the higher orbits results in the fun series. This was the explanation for the emission spectrum of hydrogen by Niels Bohr. Now let's consider the mathematical validity of this explanation of the emission spectrum of hydrogen based on Bohr model. We will consider the transition of an electron from an orbit with the, with the number n2 to another orbit with the number n1 where n2 is greater than n1. The energy associated with this orbit is e2 and the energy associated with this orbit is e1. From this equation we can write the expression for e2 and e1. So e2 is equal to minus m e raised to 4 divided by 8 epsilon 0 square n2 square h square and e1 is equal to minus m 
e raised to 4 divided by 8 epsilon 0 square n 1 square h square. The difference in energy between these two orbits is delta E which is equal to E2 minus E1. This is equal to minus M E raised to 4 divided by 8 epsilon 0 square h square times 1 by n2 square minus 1 divided by n1 square. So we can write it as m e raised to 4 divided by 8 epsilon 0 square h square times 1 by n1 square minus 1 divided by n2 square. And when the electron makes the transition from E2 to E1, the orbit with the energy E2 to orbit with the energy E1, that is from the higher orbit to the lower orbit, the radiation will be emitted. And Bohr said that the frequency of this radiation will depend on the energy difference by the equation delta E is equal to h nu, where nu is the frequency of the radiation emitted. So h nu is equal to hc nu bar, where nu bar is wave number. So we can write nu bar is equal to delta E divided by hc. And we have delta E here. So nu bar is equal to m e raised to 4 divided by 8 epsilon 0 square h cube c times 1 by n1 square minus 1 divided by n2 square where n2 is greater than n1. See, here we have an expression for the nu bar. m mass of the electron e is the charge these are constants, epsilon 0 constant, h is a constant, c is the velocity of light, that is also a constant. So, this is a constant. So, we have an expression like nu bar is equal to a constant times 1 divided by n1 square minus 1 divided by n2 square, where n2 and n1 are integers and n2 is greater than n1. We have seen a similar equation. The Rydberg formula nu bar is equal to rh times 1 divided by n1 square minus 1 divided by n2 square where n2 is greater than n1. The red bar formula which is successfully explained the positions of hydrogen, uh, the positions of uh, uh, spectral lines in the emission spectrum of hydrogen. So we can consider that this equation for nu bar, what we derived based on the Bohr model has a constant in the place of Rh, that is a red bar constant, Rh is equal to m e raised to 4 divided by 8 epsilon 0 square h cube c. Now we can substitute the values of m e epsilon 0 and h and c in this equation. So, you will get rh is equal to mass of the electron 9.1 times 10 raised to minus 31 kilogram times e raised to 4 charge of the electron 1.6 times 10 raised to minus 19 coulomb raised to 4 divided by 8 times epsilon 0 8.8541 times 10 raised to minus 12 coulomb square second square per kilogram per meter cube the whole square times 6.62 
times 10 raised to minus 34 joule second cube times velocity of light 2.9 times 10 raised to 8 meter per second. We can get the value of this as 1.09736 times 10 raised to 7 meter inverse. So we can write it as 109736 centimeter inverse. So we can see that we have a value that is calculated for the Ritter constant 109736 centimeter inverse. The experimental value of Ritter constant is 109677.57 centimeter inverse and this value and this value they are very close. So we got the value of Ritter constant from the Bohr model. So Bohr model was very much successful to explain the Ritter formula and thereby the emission spectrum of hydrogen. In summary Niels Bohr introduced a stable model of atom by bringing the concept of angular momentum condensation. He said that the angular momentum of electrons are quantized. And from that concept, he was able to derive the expression for the allowed radius of the orbits called the Bohr stationary orbits. He also calculated the energy associated with those orbits. And he was successful to derive an expression for the Ritter constant. And he calculated the value for the Ritter constant as. 109736 centimeter inverse, which was very close to the experimental value. So, Bohr model was very much successful to explain the emission spectrum of hydrogen, but it faced several failures also that we will learn in the next class.